Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Nat Me and today our topic that we're studying is the hernias, more specifically the inguinal hernias. Obviously relating from our previous topics which was the inguinal canal. Before I get started with the discussion of the inguinal hernias, I request you all to kindly subscribe to my channel, leave a like and comment at the end of the video and turn your post notifications on because currently I'm uploading the abdominal series, you do not want to miss a video. Let's go ahead and let me make this topic of inguinal hernias a piece of cake for you. To begin with, what is a hernia, right? What is it exactly? Hernias are basically protrusion of the abdominal contents into regions that they do not belong to. For instance, the loop of intestine enters your inguinal canal or the loop of intestine is entering your thigh or the loop of bowel is entering uh, your umbilicus area. These are the hernias and they are mostly known as the external hernias. These external hernias are basically when the abdominal contents are going to other regions. However, there is another form of hernia which is known as the internal hernias. The internal hernias are when within the abdominal cavity, the contents of the abdomen uh, get into no entry zones where they're not allowed to be, all right? But today our topic of discussion is mostly related to the external hernias, right? So the, in the external hernias, there are many kinds of hernias. There are many places that the abdominal contents can actually uh, protrude into. The various places they can protrude through are the linea alba, if they're protruding through the linea alba around the umbilicus, this is known as the paraumbilical hernia. However, if loop of bowel protrudes through the linea alba from the upper part of the linea alba above the umbilicus, it's known as the epigastric hernia. And then other types of hernia include the femoral hernia that we've already discussed in lower limb when they are protruding through the femoral canal. But today's topic of discussion is the loop of bowel or the abdominal content that is going to be protruding through the inguinal canal. These are known as the inguinal hernias. All right. So here we'll start the discussion of the inguinal hernias. Inguinal hernia by definition is a protrusion of abdominal content, could be a peritoneum or a loop of intestine, through the inguinal wall or the inguinal canal, one of the two. Inguinal hernias actually constitute about 75% of all the hernias we just talked about. And inguinal hernia is more common in men. You can say about 86% males develop the inguinal hernia. There are two types of inguinal hernia. There is a direct inguinal hernia and there is a indirect inguinal hernia. The direct inguinal hernia, the protrusion is through the inguinal wall. Whereas the protrusion in the indirect inguinal hernia is through mostly deep inguinal ring, inguinal canal out the superficial inguinal ring. Since you know that the deep inguinal ring and the superficial inguinal ring are areas of weakness in the anterior abdominal wall, any content of the bowel can easily through these rings get into your genital region. So there are two ways that the loop of bowel can enter your genital region. Basically your hernia will eventually enter into your scrotum with the testes and the spermatic cord, right? So there are two ways it can enter. Let's suppose this is the deep inguinal ring, this is the superficial inguinal ring, all right? So, an indirect hernia is when the loop of intestine is going to take this pathway and enter into your scrotum with the spermatic cord. It is within the spermatic cord in this case. This is the indirect inguinal hernia. The direct inguinal hernia is when, so let's suppose there's a deep inguinal ring, superficial inguinal ring, the inguinal canal and the scrotum. So, in the case of direct inguinal hernia, your inguinal canal's posterior wall is weak which is why it enters through the posterior wall traverses medial half of the inguinal canal through the superficial inguinal ring and into your scrotum so there are two two ways that hernia can actually enter into the the genital region right what does a hernia look like the hernia is composed of a sac with the coverings inside it and the content inside it all right the content you all know could be a loop of intestine could be peritoneum all right and then you have the coverings of it like the spermatic fascias in case of the indirect inguinal hernia and the cremasteric fascia and then it has a whole sac the sac is the major portion of the hernia the sac consists of the narrow part which is the neck and a big part this is the body of the hernia so this is what a hernia is basically going to look like. Direct inguinal hernia is less common than the indirect inguinal hernia. So you can say it is 
less common the direct inguinal hernia happen what is the cause or the etiology of the direct inguinal hernia it is caused by weakness in the abdominal muscles or the abdominal wall there is some sort of weakness because of a reason that is why direct inguinal hernias mostly occur in old males right whereas the indirect inguinal hernia is caused by the patency of the processus vaginalis and what is the processus vaginalis let me just revise a little bit of embryo when the descent of testes is taking place before the testes can enter your inguinal canal there is an evagination of the peritoneum that is basically a space that goes into the inguinal canal first so that it basically makes a space for the testes to enter right so this space is known as the processus vaginalis it extends all the way into the scrotum right the space and then the testes descends easily into the space and then what happens this space closes before the baby is born this space closes and the space is gone however in some cases this space remains patent all right this causes the loop of bowels to enter the space and enter into the scrotum so the etiology of indirect inguinal hernia is due to the patency of the processus vaginalis therefore when do you think the indirect inguinal hernia will occur in which age group obviously in babies male infants normally the processus vaginalis obliterated before a baby is born but in cases where the obliteration has not taken place it will present in babies as the indirect inguinal hernia so mostly in either infants or children next uh, difference between direct inguinal hernia is where they come from we all know that the indirect inguinal hernia comes through the deep inguinal ring into the inguinal canal and then it enters the superficial inguinal ring through which it enters your scrotum what is the direct inguinal hernia basically there is a weakness in the posterior wall of the inguinal canal right because when men that are old they usually because of uh, maybe due to a disease that they cough a lot that can result in recurrent trauma which is why the posterior wall of the inguinal canal gets weak right so this posterior wall of the inguinal canal there is an area called the hesselbach triangle and through this hesselbach triangle your hernia occurs right now the hesselbach triangle is basically bounded laterally by the inferior epigastric artery and medially by this rectus abdominis muscle you remember this is a vertical muscle the inferior epigastric artery which was lying just medial to the deep inguinal ring this is formed by the inguinal ligament the lateral boundary is the inferior epigastric artery and the medial boundary is the lateral border of the rectus abdominis muscle and then there is this medial umbilical ligament or the obliterated umbilical artery which is dividing this hesselbach triangle into a lateral part and a medial part it is through this hesselbach triangle that a direct inguinal hernia occurs so the hesselbach triangle is a very important uh, word with its boundaries in cases of direct inguinal hernia whereas in indirect the pathway is quite simple we've uh, talked about the entire inguinal canal once it enters through the hesselbach triangle it can traverse the rest of the inguinal canal and then the superficial inguinal ring and then out into the scrotum direct inguinal hernia can occur through this lateral part or it can even occur through this medial part the next difference between a direct and an indirect inguinal hernia is the coverings of the hernia right in indirect inguinal hernia the coverings are pretty simple what can they be the extra peritoneal connective tissue obviously the internal spermatic fascia same coverings as the spermatic cord carries the cremasteric fascia the external spermatic fascia right but in case of indirect inguinal hernia the coverings will be the coverings that are occurring in the abdomen so if the internal spermatic fascia is derived from the fascia transverse salis right so in addition to extra peritoneal connective tissue the covering will be the fascia transverse salis then the cremasteric fascia and then the external spermatic fascia neck of the hernia or the neck of the sac of the hernia is usually wide whereas in the indirect inguinal hernia the neck is usually narrow what is the point of this difference basically when the neck of a hernia is narrow there is increased risk of strangulation what are the complications of the hernias the three complication of the hernias include the first complication is the irreducibility normally your hernia stays within your abdomen 
when you uh, cough or you are doing an activity that raises the intra abdominal pressure is when the hernia comes out only then irreducibility means it is out it is herniating whether the abdominal pressure is raised or not it is there it is not reducing this is a sign of danger and you have to operate it as soon as possible next complication of inguinal hernias is the obstruction obstruction of what obstruction of the intestine so if the loop of bowel is within the hernial sac food can get stuck here they are unable to move forward into the intestine leading to obstruction intestinal obstruction which causes vomiting constipation and extreme pain last complication is known as a strangulation Since if the neck is narrow especially the blood supply to this loop of bowel gets cut off because it's so narrow that it's compressing the blood vessels and when the blood vessels the blood supply to that loop of bowel is cut off the loop of bowel starts to die and in pathological terms this is known as the necrosis of the tissue and necrosis causes severe pain it can even lead to death because it spreads poison into the body due to the danger of these three complications occurring usually hernias should be operated as soon as possible right so in case of indirect inguinal hernia there are great increased chance of strangulation because the neck is narrow whereas wide neck in the direct inguinal hernias another important difference is that the direct inguinal hernia lies outside the spermatic cord whereas the indirect inguinal hernia lies within the spermatic cord and that is because the indirect inguinal hernia is going to traverse a similar route as the spermatic cord so it gets embedded in all those fascias the way spermatic cord does whereas the direct inguinal hernia is just coming in the middle and it just misses a layer or two that are covering the spermatic cord therefore it only runs parallel to this spermatic cord how will you differentiate between a direct and indirect inguinal hernia clinically so what we can do is we can do the ring occlusion tests which is that Physically, I will put my finger on the superficial inguinal ring and the deep inguinal ring, roughly uh, where I know through surface marking where these two are located, and I will ask the patient to cough. When the patient will cough, I will feel a pulse because obviously, when you cough, the intra-abdominal pressure is raised and the loop of intestine usually goes in. So, in case of indirect inguinal hernia, I will feel a mass on the deep inguinal ring, and I will feel something come out of the superficial inguinal ring. So, both areas, I will feel a pulse. All right. but in case of the direct inguinal hernia i will probably feel the pulse coming only in the superficial inguinal ring not in the deep inguinal ring therefore i will place my finger on the inguinal triangle and when i when the person will cough i'll feel the impulse in case of direct inguinal hernia so i can differentiate that way so as an overall view of the inguinal hernias the most important part is the difference between the direct and indirect inguinal hernias their definitions and their etiologies all right Direct inguinal hernia occurs through the Hesselbach triangle, whereas the indirect inguinal hernia is occurring due to the patent processus vaginalis. Mostly in old males is the direct hernia, whereas indirect is occurring in male infants and children. So that was all you needed to know about the inguinal hernias. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel, leave a like and comment. If you want me to keep posting videos in which I make anatomy super simple for you. Do not forget to click on the subscribe button. And thank you so much for watching.